What does the government know that they're not telling us, uh, I guess? Well, in fact, um, I, I did the brief Congress on May 1st, uh, 2025, just uh, several months ago, and uh, met uh, uh, Representative Luna there. And I think she uh, uh, has a visionary program uh, to, to figure out what the government might know and is not telling us. Uh, and uh, frankly, I, I really don't know because the day before that, I visited the Pentagon and met with the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office that is supposed to look back at reports from military personnel and uh, I asked them, you know, uh, we were sitting around the table, they invited me and I said, look, um, uh, can you tell me, you've been checking this for a couple of years, did you find anything? What, uh, first, do you have access to all the information? They said, we have access to all the information, we haven't found anything unusual except some reports from FBI agents. And um, a day later, I go to Congress and next to me sits uh, uh, Eric Davis and uh, he was uh, saying that he worked within government and knows about a dozen uh, craft that uh, uh, were retrieved from uh, crash sites and uh, with four types of aliens, uh, alien pilots uh, in them. Now, the fundamental question, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I don't have access to the information or the data. I cannot judge. Mm -hmm. One of them is not telling me the truth. You're right. So. Mm -hmm. you, it can't be that both are right and uh, who is not uh, is difficult. also i like just to interrupt here a little bit i you know i come from a special operations background i understand how there's uh you for things that you don't want directly attributable to the government you hire contractors you hire yes. defense contractors yes. and so when you say that um somebody told you they have access to all the information my follow-up question to that would be, okay, do you have access to all the information that was organically sourced by the Department of Defense or DNI? Are you including private corporations, name any of them, who may be very interested in UAPs yeah. no, that's and an the excellent, technology? Uh, that's an excellent question. Now, on top of that, you have people who are spreading misinformation or unreliable evidence. So even in the last uh, congressional hearing, we saw a video that was just shown uh, for the first time of a Hellfire missile that uh, mm -hmm. was shot uh, at an object that uh, was uh, called an unidentified anomalous phenomena or UAP uh, near Yemen. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I looked at the video and uh, there was a date when it was taken near Yemen. And I checked and, you know, around that date, uh, uh, the Houthis were shooting uh, drones uh, at Israel, at southern Israel. And uh, and then uh, I, I know the parameters of the Hellfire missile. I know the speed of the Hellfire missile and the size of the Hellfire missile. So I could see it touching this object. So I, when they touch, when they are in contact, I can tell the relative size of the two because they are at the same distance from the camera. Mm -hmm. So... And then I can also tell the speed because before they co get into contact, I can tell how much is this uh, UAP moving relative to how much is the Hellfire missile moving. So knowing the speed of uh, Hellfire missiles, I could tell that, you know, the uh, so the Hellfire moves at uh, about uh, 440 meters per second. This object was moving at 50 meters per second. And then the size was uh, also characteristic of the size of drones, you know, and uh, now the question is, why didn't we see evidence for the wings? I don't know what uh, this object was, but the fact that the Houthis were using, uh, you know, objects that are of this dimension with this speed, you know, that's the speed of a dr the drone that the drones that they were using at the time, to me says that it's very terrestrial. You know, the, this uh, object that was and and a Hellfire missile was uh, uh, designed to as an anti-tank weapons you know it, it detonates when it impacts a tank uh, the armor of a tank but if it impacts a soft object that that is in you know uh, in air it's not, and uh, it actually did not detonate it, it broke a few pieces so i said well this is probably not uh, extraterrestrial okay it's it's close to the houthis near yemen the timing is just around the time where they were using uh, uh drones of this size this speed so so i said no it's not a, a, a uap it's it's actually very terrestrial and and of course i immediately was criticized by those who want to be believers now the point of the matter is you need to really look at the flight characteristics of the object to tell whether it's beyond 
human-made technologies. And this object was not, okay? So let's leave it. So the, the only thing is that the Hellfire missile did not explode, okay? But that's because it was a, probably a soft target. It didn't, or the Hellfire missile didn't have a detonation trigger. I'm not sure what the reason is, but the point is, this is not extra necessarily extraterrestrial. Now, of course, there are reports about things that are extremely unusual. And um, the director of national intelligence talked about uh, events, uh, even some of them, uh, uh, Ratcliffe, uh, when he was director of Na national intelligence, uh, he was talking about uh, uh, satellite data. And um, so uh, altogether, um, I, I do think that the government may have data, but it's classified for obvious reasons, because mm -hmm. it, it was taken by uh, classified sensors. If they have objects that they can be sure are not uh, terrestrial, are not human-made, you know, it's not in their purview, it's, it's not in their jurisdiction to figure out what lies outside the solar system. They should focus on national security threats. And uh, I would be delighted to help them figure out uh, anything that came from outside the solar system. So I do think that they should allow for that, for scientific research, if they have something. I haven't seen it, but I'm leading the Galileo project, which uh, just constructed three observatories looking at unusual objects in the sky. And the latest one is uh, actually this week is being completed with three units that would allow us to triangulate and figure out the distance of an object in the sky, the speed, the acceleration. So my hope is we will be able to, within the coming year, to look at the, a few million objects and uh, check if any of them goes beyond the flight characteristics of human-made objects. And I also told my research team in the Galileo project, I said that uh, we should check after 3 I Atlas passes by whether there is any enhanced activity. Yeah, and the flight characteristics, I think that's the one thing that stood out to me about the Yemen uh, UAP and the Hellfire. It didn't change course dramatically or anything. Some of the video that we've seen from Navy pilots off San Diego, they show objects that are accelerating, decelerating, stop, go, like things that just are not as far as we know, uh, a capability that anybody on Earth currently possesses, exactly. whereas the UAP in the Yemen video that just came out recently, even after impact, it continued on almost like it was a drone not intelligently operated because right. it just kept going at the same rate, the same speed, right. as far as I could tell. Uh, yeah. I mean, the other thing is you find these uh, conspiracy theories that, uh, for example, argue that uh, you know I came up with uh, the discussion about 3i Atlas to deflect the attention from the Epstein files. Now, I cannot be that powerful, you know, I, I would need to be more powerful than the Pope to do that because this object was uh, four and a half times farther than the sun is from Earth, you know, and, yeah. the, uh, and, and actually it was looked at from uh, 227 observatories on Earth and mm -hmm. the, the space telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope, James Webb. So you can't arrange a, a fake object at such a huge distance, uh, you know, I, I, I have no power to do that. And so I, I told those people, you know, that uh, come up with these ideas that they, they can buy a half a meter telescope online and they can see this object. You know, this object is in the sky. There is no way for me to fabricate the existence of this object. And wh whether it's anomalous or not is not up to us. You know, we observe it, we, we see some anomalies, so we should discuss them. Uh, you know, so I think an important point to recognize is that we should be guided by data, by evidence, and uh, rather than by stories uh, that people tell us. And, and that's the way we will find uh, higher meaning to our existence.